Hey guys, save time with my rapid web development process. Number one, start off by sketching out the app screens and use case flow from page to page. So what does that mean? I take a piece of paper typically, although you could do it with an iPad or something, but I take a piece of paper and I draw out all my screens, all the web pages, the login page, the product list page, the contact us page, etc., etc., etc. Why do I draw out these pages? Because it's a great way to figure out initially what it is the app is going to look like, the web app in this case. It's also a great way to show your clients, if you have a client, exactly what it is you're going to be building for. Now, the sketches are not there for design. They're just there to show them the use case flow. What does that mean? When somebody logs in, what happens if they fail to log in? Does it take them to a failure page or it's in the same page? Once they log in, what's the first page that they see once they log in? So you draw box to box, little arrows, little lines. It helps in a big way. Another thing that this does, it helps you to define exactly the data that you're going to be storing in your database. So writing out those view pages, the views is just a nerd's way of saying the web pages, the, the, the screens that people see, uh, is the first step. Now, when you look at the development cycle, I like to divide into three segments. First, after I've done my sketching and get the first approval, the first is I write the view code. Basically, if I'm doing web apps, websites, I am writing HTML and CSS. Now, if you're not a great designer, just use a template, a wireframe template, so you get your three columns or your two columns and your header and your footer, etc. You know, you just want to get those screens up in code form. Once you have the screens in place, then the next step for me is to build the database. Most of the time, it's going to be an SQL-based database, and a lot of times, by looking at the screens, look at the forms, look at the information you're going to collect, it goes a long way in helping you to build at least the, the initial design of the database. Uh, don't skimp on that because a properly designed system is going to go a long way to having a, a system that runs well in the long run. And number three, you want to stitch both the database and screens together using your programming code, whether it be PHP, whether it be JavaScript, whether it be Java or Python, whatnot. This is how you get your first alpha app out so that people can start hitting it and testing the application in its early stages. Before I go on, this video is sponsored by Blinkist. Now, Blinkist is a service where they basically take books, popular books, nonfiction, and they summarize them for you. So instead of having to read 300 pages, you read 15 pages, 20 pages, or you can get an audio version as well. It's just a quick and easy way to consume content. Check on the links below. If you click on the link below, Blinkist.com slash the fan, the first 100 people will get one week full access free with the option of getting the full version of Blinkist at 25% off. All right. So once you have your app database and your apps views stitched together, the next thing you do is you start iterating through the code. You start modifying it and changing it based on the input that you're getting from your client. One thing you got to remember is that you have to have a specification document. I talk about this in my freelance course to make sure you don't get uh, feature creep. I'll get more into that a little bit later. So yeah, so now you got a working app. So you're going to have people hit the app and start commenting. Ah, oh, I don't like how this works. We're going to need to track this. We're going to need to do that. What you're going to see is that 99.999% of the time, nobody will know exactly everything that they need to track in a system until they actually see it and start working with it. That's why uh, the very first code that you write, this alpha code, it has to be quick and dirty code. You just want to get something working quickly as possible because you're going to have to expect there's going to be a lot of changes to it. Once you get past number three, you go to number four. Now start refactoring your code as you go. So as you iterate, as you get feedback, from the owner or from your client and you start making changes, the code base and the functionality and the use case is going to solidify, meaning you're going to know more and more exactly what the app's supposed to do. And once, as you learn more and more, as you solidify this more and more, then you start cleaning up the code. Nerds will call this refactoring the code. That's when you start cleaning up, making it more solid for the long term. 
Number five, once you have solid objects with well-defined functionality, start integrating unit tests to protect the code. So let's say you're past the alpha, you're into early beta, and you got your data access code pretty solid in place. Then you might want to slap some unit tests in there just to protect it from changes. Again, I wouldn't put unit tests in initially because things are too hectic at this point, too much can change. But once you have a solid code base, then you start getting into more unit testing. Number seven, again, you get continued feedback as you go along. When you iterate, you don't want to get too far away from the client. You don't want to go on a tangent and make assumptions about what the client wants. We all make that mistake. You want to make sure that you give them feedback. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're getting the feedback from the client as you go. But at the same time, you don't want to allow for feature creep. You don't want to allow for feature creep. That's why you got to have a specification document detailed uh, when you start building your project. Just in the initial stages, maybe slight changes to it after you get your initial uh, sketched out screens going. Because trust me, they're going to start wanting to build all kinds of different things. Next thing, their e-commerce store is going to order pizza on the side. So just keep that in mind. And number eight, yeah, again, be sure the app specifications are detailed in the documentation to help curtail feature creep. Feature creep is just a term that means creeping features, like, a, like an animal creeping towards you. You don't want your app that you figure was going to be 50,000 lines of code to balloon into 150,000 lines of code. That's where proper documentation that is uh, everybody has agreed upon uh, is uh, put into place. You don't want to have that out there moving along without any controls. Again, I talk about that in my freelance course. So once again, Blinkist is the sponsor for this. Uh, let me read a couple of bullet points from their sites. Uh, insights in 15 minutes, get the key ideas from best-selling nonfiction distilled by experts into bite-sized text and audio. As I'm recording this, over 3,000 titles explore a vast library and stay up to date thanks to the 40 new titles that are added each month, over 10 million users. Let me log in. So I got an account, which is pretty cool. So you log in and you got the discovery page here. You got your categories at the top that you can scroll through and you click on, let's say, science. And it shows you a list of books that are in the science categories. And the Passion Paradox, or Sex at Dawn. I will try the Passion Paradox, so I just select that. Boom, now it's added to my library. So I go back, we go to my library, and there it is, a Passion Paradox. Now I can just click on this to download it. So you see it's downloading the audio summary to my, uh, to my Android device in this case. I'm using a Pixel. But let's go to this 15 Secrets no, you know what? We're going to go down here. Neuro Linguistic Programming for Dummies. I click on that. I've already been in there. And you see some highlighted text. I, highlight, I highlighted that text by selecting certain passages that I thought were interesting. So I select a passage. I go highlight. Boom, it's highlighted. So what happens with that? So if I go back to my, uh, to my U button here. You see, I got my favorite neuro linguistic programming. I got my highlights, so I can click on that. Four highlights in neuro linguistic programming, which you can refer to. Click on it, it takes me right back to that spot. Very cool. There's also other things you can do with the app. You can select, uh, let's find something we want to select here. Let's say I want another definition of NLP, and I would just click on that. What should I get? Click on that. Web search opens up my web browser, gives me Google results for NLP. So there you go. Blinkist, pretty cool product. Runs on Android, iOS, and in your web browser for the desktop. It's a quick way to uh, expose yourself to all kinds of cool ideas in summary, in written and in audio format. Check out the link below. The first 100 people can get access for one week for free or you can get 25% off if you decide to go for a full membership. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.